welcome to another live demonstration. Today I want to introduce you to the new Aquafine watercolour inks. So Daily Rani are adding to their really popular Aquafine range and they've introduced a few new ranges which I will do in other demonstrations but the one I'm going to show you today is the Aquafine watercolour ink. So this is a watercolour ink which means it can be um, re-wetted once dried. So I'm just going to drop a little bit onto my palette. And what a watercolour ink or watercolour in this wet form does is it gives you really strong colour, already very wet and fluid, um, which means you don't always use a lot of the um, paint. They come in nice little bottles with droppers and I will use that as part of the painting. Um, so it works very much like a watercolour, but wet already. So I'm going to go straight in and I'm going to just do a wash of the yellow over a lot of the picture. It gives me a ground colour. I did look at the light fast ratings on the Aquafine range and they all are considered um, pretty high. They've got at least three stars. I think a couple of colours like the Umbers have four stars. So they all fit into that um, excellent light fast range. Not worrying where I'm putting it, I'm just making sure it's consistent across the whole of the picture. It just draws it in. Now the set I'm using is the set of six. So it's got red, yellow, blue, um, a brown. So with the magenta it's got a great mixing colour. Um, and it just gives you great opportunities to mix colours and do a lot of things to be honest. I'm always one for a lot of less colours sometimes don't overwhelm you. I was looking at something the other day and there were so many colours I was a little overwhelmed about what colours I actually wanted to use so I just went back to basics and um, really cut my range down. So you'll see here this is the ultramarine blue dark and it's separated. This is just because it's been standing. <coughs> this is what um, inks will do. They separate from their binder while they're standing. It's easy just to remix the colour. Now I could shake. What that does is encourage lots of bubbles and if I want to put it straight on to the work it gives me little bubbles so I'm just... I turn it upside down like this, make sure your lid's on well and I just make sure that the pigment that's settled at the bottom gets mixed in to the binder. Now this happens with some colours more than others and it's fairly normal. It's the same you'll get with um, your watercolour paint. You'll see the binder comes out first and it's because the pigment settled. So that should be quite well stirred. I'm just going to use the dropper and just drop some colour on. And just see how that works, add some more colour just to move it. And this is the great thing about fluid water, it's there, it's there instantly. Just trying to make sure it goes into the toucan, so it toucan's not isolated. And I don't want to lose some of those qualities that I have achieved by just dropping it on. So I'm not going to try and mix too much. Okay, let's just see how that dries. Again with watercolour, it's seeing how it dries. Now, I want to work into the beak and I want to create orange. So that will be red and yellow. I have mixed up most of the colours beforehand. Um, I just wanted to show you the blue, how it had separated, just so you're not unaware that this happens. So the yellow 
and red make the orange, but the orange is quite bright, so I'm just going to make sure I can take it down a notch. Now, one good thing about um, the Aquafine or any watercolour ink in bottles is that you can measure a little bit more easily than you can with watercolours when you mix things. So you can have one drop of red, two drops of yellow, and it gives you a fairly consistent colour. So you know, again, one drop of red and two drops of yellow gives you almost the colour you're looking for. So that's another great thing about having the dropper. Okay, so I've mixed my orange. Go back into the yellow and just put the yellow on because I want to just make sure that the orange doesn't overpower. It's not strong enough. So add a little bit more. Okay, see, just a tiny bit more. It doesn't matter if I go over because I'm going to go back in at a later date. Now I'm just adapting the colour by adding or taking away as I go along. One thing about the liquid watercolour is it's quite transparent, so you have to just be aware about the colours you've got underneath. So there you've got that blue has seeped in to the bill. Not a big issue because I can use it and take it down to create a shadow. And then I might leave that to dry before I even attempt it. So if you're in doubt, leave it. I'm just looking. He has an orange patch around the eye. And his, his eyes are actually quite blue. Now, I did learn some facts about the toucan, or this toucan. And the bill is, can be half the body size. So that is a big bill to carry around. Okay. Just drop a little bit stronger into the bottom here, just looking at tonal balance. If you get them down now, you don't have to go back and look at them at a later date. I like to get often things down first time. It doesn't always happen, it just means less fiddling. So that may still be a little bit wet. Again, I'll come back into that. Anita? Yes. Is this one of your photographs? Yes. Um, I think I took this in Miami. I took it at a zoo. The original's got um, the cage around it, but I'm looking beyond that. Um, most of the photographs I use, I try to use ones I've taken and actually very luckily I just send a shout out to my colleagues and say I need a um, picture um, of a, I know it can be random, it can be like something like a butterfly of some sort and I'll usually get um, plenty of photos back. So I have really quite lucky with my sources that I'm able to um, get plenty of source pictures. But I've always got my camera with me. And now I've gone into the 21st century and got a smartphone, mainly because it takes good pictures, not for any other reason. Um, and it just gives me the opportunity just to click wherever I'm going. If I'm going past the flower and it's got bees on it, I'm standing there clicking away. People may be going, what's happening? But for me, it just helps um, having reference information and updating it regularly because you kind of, you see the same thing over and over again and you kind of lose your momentum. So yeah, this was one of mine and a lot of them I do try and make sure that they are um, taken because then I know where the sources come from. Now I want black for the um, body but I think these colours you don't originally get a black with the set 
I've added one, but I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. But I think some of the fun is just being able to make a colour with the colours you've got. So at the moment it's quite purple, but this is an underlying colour. And I can change it and alter it and make it much more black, but still have that lovely zing of colour underneath. Because black isn't always solid black. It's much more of a, lots of other colours showing through. So by putting this purple colour on, I'm going to, again, I'm not being overly careful. What I am being careful about is making sure areas have dried before I'm going back into them. I don't mind a little bit of um, bleeding out, but I want to have a little bit more control. I'm, this is going to be quite a loose piece of work. You know, the colours aren't going to be totally accurate, but you'll get the idea. You'll know it's a toucan, and I'm using the colours I've got, so it's a good exercise to see what you can achieve with the colours you've got. If I haven't got black, what can I do? And the purple, I think, works really well. Anita? Yes. I have a quick question for you from Paolo. Yes. Paolo uh, is asking, can you mix, um, I'm assuming, on your palette a really dark tone rather than layering? I can do. I could do, because I've actually got the black out. So I could use black. Um, and I've got a, a number, which I know, mixed with the ultramarine, will make a nice black. And I'm going to. But what I'm going giving myself is a wonderful bright colour underneath and you'll see when I do put a layer on that that layer will shine through as if I mix it on the palette I think it gives me a very flat colour and what I'm looking for is much more brightness because the eye I want to be black but I'm going to go back into that um, with another tool which you get actually with the set so I'm, all I'm doing is giving myself a really bright under colour but yes, I can mix a black. Well, I have a black anyway, or I can mix one. The, the ultramarine usually mixes really well with the umbers. Or a burnt sienna, you make a lovely um, grey-black there. So it's still not dry enough to put that orange stripe down. But you can see, actually, the colours are fading to um, about half their strength. Um, so layering is really a nice thing to be able to do. Just adding detail on, not being precise. I'm really trying not to be overly concerned about where I'm putting colour. Oh, that's a nice colour. It isn't a, if I wanted to do a lifelike tonal, you know, all the colours are right, I would use a different medium or I will have chosen the colours I wanted but I'm working from the set of six and I want to see what I can achieve and that's sometimes just the fun part of the exercise so let those colours merge I don't know how I made it I just added a bit of the red there you go giving it giving him a perch a bit of shadow underneath It's fine. So I'm going to look at adding a little bit of shadow into the white. Now I want to see if I can lift off actually. I might have overdone the yellow a little bit. So just lifting off. I'm not sure how well this will work. It's a bit of kitchen roll. And see if I can lift off some of that yellow and take it back cleanly to the it's not bad. Let's take it back a little bit. So scrubbing into the paper just to take away that yellow I've got. Now some papers are much easier to do this. Others, if you do it too long, it starts to bubble um, where the surface starts to go away, come away. So you know, practice, make sure you know how your paper's going to react before you try 
and do this. And I know this, is, I can do it for a while, but it will start to bubble. It is just starting a little bit here. And there are some great tools out there which actually help with this. So while I've got, I'm letting other areas dry, just coming in with the blue. Let me lighten that. So just putting the blue around the eye. So that's, the reason I chose this was the, for all the fabulous colours you get. I love colourful work. So I try and choose subjects which have all those colours. Let's go back in. The orange. See if I can now bring back that. Let's need it deeper. See if I can bring back now this stripe. I needed this to be dry because I want it to be a clean line. Looking at where it starts and finishes and to make sure I've got a nice clean line. So I'm mixing textures. You've got some rough background work. Don't know how well that's working, but alongside some really nice clean lines. So the beak is goes together and it has a kind of a rough edge. So just indicating that bit of tonal value on my brush. So my original image, sorry, my original image is actually quite dark. I can't see a lot of tonal value. So this is where I'm adding them. I'm creating them. Just, just so I can give it a little bit more depth and texture. So that's very flat. So this is how you can take a photograph as a reference and then start to Add your own details. People won't have seen the original image. This is yours. So it doesn't matter what you do with it. I'll just soften that. Okay, I'm going to leave that. And now I'm going to start to work on getting this a little bit blacker or darker, but again, not take away too much from the underlying purple colour I've got. So I'm going to put some more blue down. A um, little bit more magenta to make that purple again. And then I'm going to add some burnt umber. Let's see if this will darken it down a little bit. So They're such bright colours and very transparent, which is um, great, but no, that's made it more yellow. Quick question, Nita. Yep. Uh, oh, what, no. what paper are you, are you using? Paper, Bockingford. This is a cellulose um, artist quality paper. I'll be using 300 gram because I can see it is cockling a little bit. Um, so it's a cellulose paper, but a really nice artist quality. I like it because I just like the texture and the toughness of the paper. So adding that umber will have given me some darker colours, but not too dark. I still want to keep that purple. I might add a bit more blue. See if I can get different colours and tones. But even as it looks now, you can see... It is a token, and yes, it's a little bit purple, but you, you kind of, in your mind, know it, it's much blacker. So, like I say, transparent colours. And all I'm doing is avoiding using black. That's just what I'm doing. And I can put the... If I really need to put some darker tones on, as I find that it's not dried as dark as I'd like, can easily come back. So you can see there, now just darkening off, but keeping those wonderful colours underneath. This is going to be quite dark. I'm not sure if I put some of this orange in, that will darken it as well. So just using the six colours, 
just seeing what colours you can achieve from it. I'm going to keep a lot of this purple, but it's going to be darker under here because it's leaning forward. Like I say, I haven't got much light from the original reference, but I'm just thinking about where the darker areas will be. So this tail or body is behind this branch, so therefore it's going to get darker, but bits of the head, bits of the back may be catching a little bit of light. So I'm just keeping those areas. Now his feet, I was reading, um, the feet are very short and stubby compared to the body. That's great for attaching themselves to um, the side of a tree. And I'm, I'm not going to actually change the colour of those very much because I actually like this purple. So, nothing else there. I'm going to use this purple now, very wet. Just trying to get a really wet colour. Maybe a little bit more blue because I want to put some shadow. Anita. See how much water I'm having to add, yes. Sorry, uh, Gracie, who's watching, wants me to tell you that she's a big fan of yours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm not good when people say that. All I want to do is just show people that actually it's really achievable. And a lot of people have shown one way and not given the opportunity to even know about how many other ways of creating art there are so i'm the in the um stream of try whatever you can have a go sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but every time you do something you're learning okay. so i was creating a really wet shadow because you're going to have a, some shadow under the, in this white area here and i think i possibly should have left it white and not as much yellow on. Again, it's you're learning. I'm going to try and get some of the colour to bleed in as well. Just thinking about where I could possibly have shadow. If I've overdone it, just wet it back a little bit. And I know it's going to dry a lot lighter. Okay, just looking at that. What I need to do now is to let this dry and then I'll come in and I'll work on the next layer. And this time I'll be doing it with the um, F&W mixed media pen, which is actually included in the set of six. So join me in a minute while I get this to dry. Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage, and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles, and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalogue with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started, as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration for the magazines. To be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seemed like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it. Hello and welcome back. I've had a chance to blast this with a hairdryer and the cockling has gone down a little bit more, which I, I love seeing that once you dry things, it just starts to flatten itself again. So 
I'm going to finish off or add some detail with the um, F and W paint marker. Now you get one of these in the set of six, which is part of the reason I chose the set of six. Um, the one thing I had to do, because the colours were brown, magenta, red, they didn't have a black. So I've added um, a black to the set of six because I wanted a, to put black in the pen. Now I'm not sure how easy it is to show you, but what you do is you fill the pen. You just replace. Yeah, sorry. And there you have a ready prepped. You need to just pump a little bit just to get the ink flowing. And then you're off and ready. So really nice way of being able to use the watercolour inks but in a much more controlled form. So it's, it's all the same medium, just applied with different tools. So now I'm going to, and I just looking at this, that purple works really well. I don't need to add any black to it. I think it's working really well. So start with the eye. This is the bit that I am missing and I need to start to focus. And what I'll do is I'll start to draw outwards. So start with the eye, just to have a little focus and look at detail. And I'm not going to create solid lines. I'm going to do a little bit of broken line and just see, add a little bit of detail here. Maybe edges need sharpening. Work this way around. And I'm putting it on quite lightly. It's quite wet at the moment because I've just prepped it. But you can see there, I don't need to create a solid line because the shape's already there. I try and create a smoother line, but again, it's not going to be completely um, solid. It's just all to do with adding texture and how you feel. If you want to do a nice solid outline, that's absolutely fine. But for me, this is just, I want it to be quite loose. Just add that extra bit of detail. I can go back in. Just suggesting that the feathers, the way they're lying, the smooth across his back. Right. They have long claws, so I want to bring those out. And their feet are, they ha they're kind of a grey, and you can see the texture in them. So Now these pens, the one that comes in set is this one, but they do come with a much finer nib. Um, and so you can get some really fine detail if you wanted to. But I'm just using it to bring out some details which may be a little lost. But you can see why I didn't need to use black in the body. I think this gives it a much nicer feel. So give it something solid to sit on and some texture there. Again, make sure things fit together. So I'm having another look around. Where can I go back into? Just make sure the eye stands out. Make sure across here it's quite detailed because I think it's just the biggest feature is the face, the eye. Let me just straighten that a little bit. It's a little bit. The eye is going to be quite smooth. A bit of detail. And to be honest, I don't think I need much more. I think that's worked really well. So just to recap, um, using the watercolour inks in the Aquafine range, so they're new to the Aquafine range. De La Rowney, Aquafine, really big um, part of their brand, but they've introduced watercolour inks. So watercolour inks 
re-wettable once dry, not like other inks that may dry permanent. These are watercolour inks, re-wettable once dry. Um, the set of six I used has good basic colours. You need to shape them to activate and it comes with um, the paint marker which you can fill with any colour. You can get these individually, so there's, there are other nibs available. Um, and it, you're still using the same medium, but with a different tool. So hopefully this should be dry and I'm going to try and reveal, because I think this is always the fun bit. It's been able to take your tape off. I don't need the tape on. I could have just let it float outside, but you don't get the satisfaction of being able to do this. And when you take the tape off, if you tape it at an angle and actually do it quite slowly, you shouldn't rip the paper. And by angling it away, if you do rip the paper, you've ripped it on the area that won't be seen if you're mounting it. I think this is just such a satisfying part of the process. So you see here I use this area for a bit of testing and blending. It doesn't matter because what I'll do is I can cover that with a mount if I ever wanted to mount it. You'll see a lot of artists will do that just to test their colours. There we go. That's fabulous. I think I might have put a little bit too much blue on the background, but you live and learn. So I hope you enjoyed that and join us later in the week for a live workshop with Ali Hargreaves. <laughs>